Hey everyone, it's Dave here and welcome to the Blue Planet VR Overview. We have a big boy this time. From some sources, I know this game has 18 gigabytes of memory required to install, which literally says for the people who have Quest 2 64 gigabyte version, a very fat rest in peace. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure the system takes maybe 15 gigabytes alone, not totally sure, and it's growing still because of the updates and stuff. So we're not even one year into the release of the Quest 2, but the space is getting so small that the 250s 6 GB version is like pretty much mandatory nowadays if you want to have at least some couple of experiences to play. So Blue Planet VR seems to be a simulation of photorealistic 360 videos where you basically travel around the environments that were picked up by the camera I believe. I mean of course, <laughs> I mean what I'm talking about. I think they claim that you will feel like a bird kind of flying around the big spaces, say Antarctica, mountains, just those hard to reach places for human beings because we don't fly, <laughs> but captured in a way that should be breathtaking, but we'll see. So the trailer might seem crazy, but actually thinking about the actual size of the experience and the photogrammetry technology might actually represent what we are seeing. Essentially the first time I experienced that feature was in real VR fishing. It's basically replacing the rendering of the graphics by the processor and the engine with the actual footage that you record in real life and then converting them into the VR. Pretty sure? I don't know specifically, so I might be wrong, but that's the gist of it. So you know, while it's cool and all, it's definitely not something that we'll ever see for now in games because it's something that as you can see takes a lot of space takes a lot of time to execute so for now it's like basically reserved for those experiences that you can do much but just involve yourself and transport you to the different environment i guess the most concerning thing for me is that recordings for quest are pretty much shit nowadays so i think i might alter this overview actually for the purposes of showcasing the actual graphics that you're seeing because i know in the headset it's gonna look fine but then the video is gonna be still square and stuff so I'll see how the footage will look like and this is not necessarily a game so there's like nothing to review but I'm pretty sure I'll do some sort of a simulation of few experiences in this application to kind of see what's up but not necessarily judge because there's nothing to judge <laughs> unless the videos are shit so I guess there's that <laughs> let's just go and see <laughs> Well, I hope it's gonna be worth it because I've been waiting a long time for the download, like it has been at least two hours or something like that. And I don't know if I will even sleep to work for tomorrow, so that's just how this, you know. Okay, so we were doing like, I don't know, the things that would interest me the most, I would assume. What's happening here? Special features? Wait, I... Okay, I just have to teleport like that. Should I like touch it like that? Some scenes have special okay. interactive features such as gliding flight thrust, black and white filters, and grabbing and scaling of models. Hand controller labels will notify you of these. So okay. always take a look at your controllers when entering a scene. In the hang gliding scenes, once the information table is dismissed, press and hold both triggers to begin flying. Oh. Then tilt the glider model to aim your direction of flight. I see a mouse in the video. The slow speed is accurate to hang gliding, creating a more peaceful and intimate relationship to the terrain. That's fine. We wouldn't need like more instructions. I'm a fan of mountains in general are like snowy environments. So there seems to be like some gliding flight objects, longer walks, short walks, viewpoints. Iceland glacier. Yes. I'm down for something like that. Welcome to the vantage visual glacier. Okay. Press trigger to hide the display and begin exploring. Also, we are actually moving in this environment. Okay. I can't turn i have to turn in real life so like here the details are not even close to being good so i'm assuming it's kind of like moving forward is gonna be like the best idea because this is the photogrammetry kind of quality stuff that i see for sure You know, for Quest 2, it doesn't seem that horrible, actually. I mean, if you're going closer, I can see, you know, those edges. Yeah, definitely. They're misshapen, but... <laughs> it's like teeth or something. Okay. I didn't know we would have, like, a miniature gliding stuff. And then from far away... It actually looks real, like, from far away. <laughs> I 
I wonder what's after this horizon. You know, I played something similar before. It's this National Geographic kind of experience, which didn't use any photogrammetric stuff. It was basically just rendering the image as it is, but it was cool as well. Now we're on Quest 2, so the display is much more clearer than we've had before. So automatically the images that kind of translate into real life footage will look very good, like in the lenses. So I feel like this photogrammetry stuff really kind of enhances what we can get for from this headset for example like there in the distance this is actually like a real mountain that i can see for sure and i'm pretty sure yeah that's the image because i can see the parameters blurring out in the distance the sky looks real as well so you can kind of notice stuff that are real or not so like this glacier or glacier or whatever kind of rendered but not really from photos and then some distance like is actually real and then you have these flat surfaces that were not like taking care of because of the environment but okay i guess that's it after the edge i don't think there's anything left to see okay well <laughs> let's go back so if we would get maybe cape royale oh wow what oh wow whoa 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 this is actually kind of crazy oh this is actual real stuff that i can see this is so high quality it's actually crazy i know this is the actual photo but then in translated into vr this has to be some 8k like this is not 4k for sure like 4k photos does not look like that in the headset at all like i would actually be here <laughs> this is stuff that's kind of rendered for the photogrammetry i wish i would have smooth movement but whatever if we're close yes mute this i don't need this music like that from far away it looks real but from the closer not really okay so this is the perimeter where i can actually go here on the cliff i'm just seeing in the distance here that's pretty epic so that was like a view paint okay talk mine what's that okay so to continue to area panorama how oh, we can transfer ourselves here see this photo is not as high quality as it was this is just like a 360 photo that's like blurry in the actual headset maybe in the footage is gonna look better but not like that so short walks is like a space where you can kind of move but not really a big area but it looks real for sure yeah definitely i mean i will go back to iceland it seems it has some gorgeous views like i would never think of it oh that could be interesting okay So this is real here, this is generated, this water is interesting, like it's low frame rate, I don't know how much, like 10 maybe? I wonder if I can fly through that, there seems to be some cave but I think yeah, it's like assuming there. Oh, I think I'm gonna crash, <laughs> fly, no. <laughs> Oh wow, those textures, okay. So it's not everything, it's like, you know. Oh, I reset it? Mm, I don't know then, maybe Iceland Falls. Well, it's loud here. <laughs> this is flat. It's like an illusion of 3D, but no. I'm not sure how they rendered this one as well, like... And why the sound is like from behind me? For some reason the water is very much weirdly generated compared to the other environments. Sky looks magnificent but... Okay, there's nothing here. <laughs> so I can see this is like a road. It should have been like a road, I guess. And then there are some weird inconsistencies in rendering. Like some things are clearly flat. Some are just okay. And some are just amazing. I don't know how it went with that. I like that I have this cool, like, you know, free exploration. Oh, wait, we have people? I wonder if I can fly there. No, I can only fly forward, which is pretty weird. We're landing with someone here. Hello. Okay, he's just standing. I want to go there, but... It doesn't let me. Okay, well, I think I'm done. Let's crash. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like for 25 bucks, it has a lot of inconsistencies. Like some things can look gorgeous. I feel like the first experience I have slant glacier, I think, was like the best one if we were talking about the performance, but like the rest were just hit and miss, like very inconsistent. There's like a lot of environments. Not everything interests me really. I thought it's gonna be something better. Like when I think about photogrammetry, oh, I, we have a hand tracking apparently here as well. <laughs> I think about like a real thing trying transferred into VR. Not everything is gonna be, but you have to have some kind of section, an obvious one to like put the focus of the player, but now it's kind of like you travel with those glides pointlessly, you can't like turn, you can just only go forward, you can like go to the crevices and just other corners of the map. There's a lot of weird going on in terms of just navigation. You have free joystick, why you can't turn in the actual presentations? Like that makes no sense from the development wise. I can expect it more for such high memory memory load but I guess it is what it is. Well, two hours of waiting for that. It could be always worse I guess. I don't know. <laughs>